when you think about TI-99 games, if you ever think about TI-99 games, what comes to mind first is probably the games that came out in the TI-99's brief peak of popularity back in 1983 and 1984. Before that, TI had made some very good games of their own in the early days of the system. Like at the end of 81, when TI Invaders gave the system a great Space Invaders clone. And in early 82, when Munchman brought even more arcade gameplay to the system with TI's spin on Pac Man. Then after that, in mid 1982, when Parsec gave the TI the side scrolling space shooter that turned into its most iconic title in the long run. Plus, maybe just as importantly, 82 gave us Tunnels of Doom as TI's own unique RPG engine. But as worthwhile as all those first-party TI classics are, for me, the system's heyday is the several months at the end of 1983 and the start of 84, when popular third-party games from top developers finally came to the system, with Atari Soft, Sega, and Imagic adding hits from their catalogs to the TI library. So when cart development for TI-99 came crashing down from that peak to literally nothing at all in the space of six months in 1984, well, it was a bit of a letdown for the community. Especially because most TI users depended on cart software pretty much completely. Disk and cassette software for TI-99 just never really took off. TI released the all-important editor assembler package in spring 1982, but it needed the 32K memory upgrade, which almost nobody had. So, cart it was for most folks. And with that limitation, I'd say we're darn lucky that even after the sun had really well and truly set on the TI computer, in the late 80s, Databiotics showed up with a new batch of cart games to fill the void. Calling these games new is maybe in some cases a little too generous, though since they weren't so much new as they were just new to most of us, with the Databiotics games of 87 to 89 mostly having had some kind of prior distribution, just not as a mass-market cart. So this is my rundown of the sudden explosion of TI game carts we got at the least likely of times as the 80s came to an end, including a few favorites of mine, like Midnight Mason, Spot Shot, and Micro Pinball though I'll be running through all of them from A to Z alphabetically. And as a consequence, the good news is the first game we're looking at is Barrage, a Missile Command clone originally developed by Soft Machine in the early 80s. And it does Missile Command as well as you could ever hope on what the TI-99 has to offer anyway, making it for me one of the top databiotics carts we got. You can play with either one or two players, and something really special about it for me is that this is my favorite game to play with the Wicko TI Trackball. So for those of us with a trackball, it's arguably your best opportunity to take it for a genuinely enjoyable spin, playing Missile Command the way the arcade game intended, setting that big heavy ball spinning and having that target fly across the screen. But nice as Barrage is, next up we've got Beyond Parsec. And this one got a more mixed reaction from 99ers. Because the thing is, it's a two-player game that, unlike Barrage, can only be played as two-player game. So for anyone looking for a sequel to Parsec that delivers more of the same, well, that's not really on offer here. This is one of two times John Phillips followed up on a TI classic the other of those being Munchman 2. The difference being, Munchman 2 actually delivers more or less what the original did, so it had a more immediate appeal for TI gamers. As for Beyond Parsec, it does have asteroids and ships, and the way the asteroid inertia is handled is kind of cool. But in a world where most 99ers were playing solo, this one just didn't have a lot of takers. And so, it ends up in the graveyard of lonely two-player TI games. And we'll be hearing more about those shortly. 
because the next game in the bees after Beyond Parsec is Black Hole, which, yes indeed, is another two-player game, which as such didn't garner a ton of interest. This was originally sold as Guardian by Model Masters, and the gimmick is that you've got two ships with two different firing mechanics, and your two players have to take advantage of both of them in different ways to kill all your enemies as efficiently as they can. The bad news is it's not too difficult to work out a strategy to play indefinitely and just not die. So potentially a little dissatisfying in the long run. Though to be fair, as a kid, I and my dad enjoyed playing it just fine. Like Beyond Parsec, it just needs that second player to really be enjoyed. But at least Black Hole gives a solo player something to do, where Boxer, up next, doesn't, since there's no computer player in Boxer at all. It's just two player controlled boxers, making this a top tier candidate for that graveyard of two player TI games I mentioned. This was originally sold on disc by Magic Software, and for that version, the Pittsburgh user group did a good job of summing it up when they said, Boxer was rated as hilarious by the younger members of our group. Which is a good way to put it politely, I guess. I will say, the game is super rare, so it is a collector's item, but one of those collector's items there's no need to really ever take down off the shelf. More than once a decade, anyway. Moving on though, in Breakthrough here we've finally got another data biotics game that doesn't need a second player to be enjoyed. Because it's exactly what it claims to be. A Breakthrough game featuring both a breakout mode it calls Breakaway, and a Breakthrough mode of course. With the difference there being that in Breakout your ball bounces off the bricks, while in Breakthrough your ball goes straight through them. In addition to which options, you can also make the blocks invisible during play for an extra challenge. All in all, this is a pretty solid breakout game for what it's worth. The ball's trajectories are just a little limited, so you do find yourself bouncing the ball back and forth along exactly the same trajectory a little too much. But the fundamentals are there. And likewise, borrowing a popular design of its era is Burger Builder originally developed by Glenn Groves of Software Specialties. Not the only time we'll see Glenn's name on this list, but unfortunately probably the least notable of the bunch, since shortly after Burger Builder was developed, the TI-99 got its official Burger Time port from Data East. That Burger Time is pretty great, and one of the platform's most popular late-era games. So by all means, play it if you haven't. But as for Burger Builder here, well, it's a collector's item you probably don't need. It's super rare for about the same reason Boxer is, because there's just not much reason to own it. Our next title though, D Station 1, here from John Phillips, has actually got some distinctive gameplay to talk about. Namely, you've got a cannon turret you use to take out alien ships, and the invaders that they drop. And since your cannon's angular motion speed is limited, You've got to be strategic about the way you move it and what you target to take out everything as efficiently as you can. The mechanics are simple, but they feel well put together, with the dropships and the invaders both being legitimate targets, but the dropships being the best possible kill, since a dropship you kill right away is one that can't drop an invader. So with this being a simple but worthwhile offering, I'm not mad that it got a sequel in our next game, D Station 2 wherein you've still got enemies dropping from the sky, but you've also got warheads being launched, which can travel either vertically or diagonally. As in D-Station 1, you've got a choice between easy and hard modes, so you can make things even tougher if easy mode isn't enough for you. But it certainly is for me, so you may find hard mode just isn't necessary. So the D-Station games are just fine. But we'd kind of hope for better than just fine, given this list started with Barrage, which was downright fantastic. And thankfully, next up, we do have another lost masterpiece that Data Biotics brought to light. That being Dragonflyer. Or possibly Spotshot. But let me explain. See, the main reason this game is so good is that it was written by Jim Dramus, who's most famous today for having written Parsec the title that basically defined gaming on the TI-99. 
Like Barrage, this game got its original release from Soft Machine, as Spotshot. And that was how Databiotic sold it too at first. But they rebranded as Dragonflyer about a year later. So we've now got two cart versions of the same game. Making that super rare Dragonflyer version one more cart for collectors to lust over. As far as gameplay goes, Dragonflyer's cool gimmick is per pixel destructible barriers, which you've got to wear down to get to your enemies before they get to you. It's a seriously cool game, and since the name change didn't change gameplay at all, it's just as cool a game under either name. Now into the ease we've next got Escape, which is a version of 1983's King of the Castle by Sidex Software. And it's a pretty good game as far as simple gauntlet-style gameplay goes. It plays fast, controls well, and enemies actually move to avoid your shots. The only thing I'll say against it is that Databiotics did with it something they did with a fair few of their games, and that is write a manual that's total nonsense. Where the Sidex manual gives you some flavor and then describes the game itself accurately, the Databiotics manual is mostly wrong about everything. And the lore is all nonsense. In the ad for the game, grubby growlogs have infested Castle Gloom and all of its clones in the parallel universes. While in the manual, you have entered the grim and grisly lair of the slothful and dreaded slurchers. <laughs> but whatever. The game plays fine the way Sidex described it. So just ignore the later manual and enjoy! Then moving on to F, we've got Face Chase, a game by John Phillips originally released by Excel Tech in tiny numbers, but which actually got some distribution from Databiotics way later on. This is a really simple platformer where you avoid your enemies and collect faces strewn around the map. Though you've got some tools to help you stay safe while you do that, umbrellas you can use to float downward, and snapper repellers that block your enemies. This game got elaborated on a bit in The Great Word Race, where instead of collecting faces, you're collecting words. And personally, I'd say that's the more interesting cart to me, since it's everything face chases with a bit of word game fun thrown in. A more exciting addition for the gamers out there, though, is our next game, Junkman Jr. Which sounds a lot like Jumpman Jr., because that's exactly what it is. A TI version of the popular 80s platformer sold under that name. And the gameplay is awesome. One of the best platformers on the TI-99, period. With every level featuring a different challenge and theme. The TI-99 had to wait a little bit for a good platformer since the genre didn't really get going until later in the system's life. But it got a great Donkey Kong port once that game got the world's attention. Then, later on, between 1987 and 89, Databiotics was the major reason the system was able to catch up with everything that happened since. Not every game can be an awesome arcade platformer, though. And Mancala, our next game, is more evidence of that. Mancala being a strategy board game that got a TI translation. And while as a board game I don't have a great deal to say about it, a subtle touch I like as a fan of TI sound generation tricks is this use of periodic noise with an echo on the title screen and in-game. Which is a pretty cool effect that not many used back in the day. But otherwise, to the game's credit, it does have a computer-controlled player so you can enjoy it on your own, even if it is just a board game. So I'm happy to say that we've got something way more interesting in Micro Pinball 2 up next. This being like Burger Builder, a Glen Groves game, but unlike Burger Builder, one which made a huge contribution to the TI platform, as the best video pinball for TI-99 up until recently when kind of closing the book on the possibilities for video pinball on TI-99, we got Pinball 99 from Rasmus. Mm -hmm. 
There is no micro pinball one, incidentally. The two is just databiotics being creative with their branding. Instead, the game was based on Raster Blaster for Apple II, and it's an all-around excellent attempt to bring that kind of game to the TI, with a well-designed table and a solid physics model, making Micro Pinball 2 one of the must-play databiotics carts up there with Barrage and Spot Shot and Junkman Jr. before it. And another micro-contribution from this era that gave us something the TI didn't have before is Micro Tennis, a really good tennis game with a single and multiplayer mode. And even a demo mode where both players are computer-controlled for that matter, which is kind of cool. The TI-99 kind of lacked good sports titles, with football and indoor soccer having come early, but with most players finding those pretty disappointing. So a genuinely really well-made tennis game is nice to have. But as the hits keep on coming here, up next, Midnight Mason, like Micro Pinball, is another game from Glen Groves, and likewise another must-play databiotics card, with the game being a platformer that's kind of a mix of Load Runner and Pac-Man. In Midnight Mason, you've got to avoid the ghosts and manipulate their movement with your own movement around the level, while adding and removing gaps to make their job of catching you more difficult. Do all that, collect the treasure, and move on to the next level when you've got it all. Not a complicated formula, but there's a lot of subtle strategy in there. So, while childhood me didn't think Midnight Mason was anything too special, adult me thinks it's pretty fascinating. Now Q-Maze, originally from Soft Machine, is a game with a more straightforward plan to port a popular 80s game design, given it's clearly a Qbert clone. And like most 99ers, when I got it, I didn't have 1984's Parker Brothers Qbert cart, so when I got Q-Maze, it was much appreciated. Having been written by the masterminds at Soft Machine, the game plays really well. So if you're looking for Qbert gameplay on the TI-99, this is as solid a pick as Qbert itself. Qmaze was also sold as Jumpy, and that name is still used in-game in my Qmaze branded version. Which is to say, this is yet another case of the classic Databiotics renamed re-release here. And speaking of renamed games, how about Red Baron? Or, as originally sold, SPAD 13 Mark II, which is, granted, a little more awkward as titles go. Anyway, whatever you call it, this is far and away, even today, the best flight simulator ever made for the TI-99, and the only one with external views of the plane and its surroundings, which include a computer-controlled adversary, the Red Baron himself. Plus, you get a pretty detailed manual which explains how to fly your plane. So Red Baron is another absolute must-play databiotics game, presuming you've got the necessary patience for flight simulation on 1979 hardware. But moving on, another cart with a bit of a learning curve is Sorgan 2 here, which is one more example of databiotics showing off just how much they liked the number 2 because as with Micro Pinball 2, there was no Sorgan 1. What it is is a synth organ of sorts, with hotkeys for accessing features like chords and effects. None of which are obvious from the interface itself, so you definitely do need to reference the manual here. If you're a programmer, you're probably better off just programming TI music on your own. But for non-programmers, this could be a fun little tool, I figure, along the lines of TI's own Music Maker card. But back to games per se, next is Space Patrol, where you are an intergalactic officer of the Space Patrol, and it is your mission to destroy outlaws in every galaxy. Effectively, this is a Super Star Trek game like TI's own classic TI Trek, which leans just a little into the real-time elements of a game like Star Trek Strategic Operations Simulator. 
And personally, I don't feel like the world needs a less turn-based TI Trek, or on the other hand, a more turn-based Star Trek strategic operation simulator. So I'm happy to give this one a miss and leave those two doing what they do best. And in other tales of titles I'm a solid lukewarm about, Spy's Demise is a game which isn't bad, but just feels like it's doing less than the competition when it comes to 80s platformers. You move left and right, avoiding guards on your way up to the top floor of each level. So it's about finding the movement pattern and timing that gets you to the top in a minimum of time. That simple model makes it, I suppose, either elegant or otherwise boring, depending on how you look at it. My advice is to give it a try, but expect to find yourself moving on to more interesting platformers in not too long. And speaking of more interesting platformers, Star Runner is a solid option there, because it's the definitive Load Runner clone for TI-99 4A, originally released by EB Software as TI Runner. Load Runner is a simple enough formula, and so it's really just a question of whether the control is responsive, the enemy pathing works well, and the levels are well designed. And I'd say the answer is yes to all three in the case of Star Runner. The only downside Star Runner faces is that, as a kart game, it lacks the level editor TI Runner got. But there are plenty of tough levels to play on the kart as it is, so you won't get bored of what's there too quickly. Anyway, moving on, well, if Space Patrol is the Star Trek game the TI didn't really need, then Star Trap is the Star Wars game it could do without. I don't put the blame on John Phillips for this one, though. A TI clone of Star Wars the arcade game was always going to be a bit too much to ask, and what we got was pretty much what you'd expect. There's just not enough gameplay here to keep anyone's attention for long. So this is another one you can throw in the collector's item pile. Rare and kind of cool to own, but not one that'll actually spend much time in your TI-99. On the other hand, you might get a better view of the stars from Stargazer 1, 2, and 3, also from Philips. This is a well-put-together education game that teaches you the constellations. So, no exciting arcade action here, but as far as what it's trying to do, it does it well! This game is directly responsible for my being able to identify more than two constellations. So, that's something, I guess. And finally, returning to arcade action, T.I. Toad is an early Frogger clone by Glen Groves of Micro Pinball and Midnight Mason fame. But, being just another Frogger clone, it's less interesting than those games to me. Mainly, it just suffers from being a respectable early 80s Frogger game re-released years after there was any need for another one of those. So this one is yet another I'd put in the collector's only pile myself. So looking back at these 25 Databiotics games of the late 80s, there are some huge hits, and there are some real duds. But collectively, they managed to refill the TI-99 game library with new titles at a time when the system looked long forgotten. And for every burger builder giving us a second-rate version of a game we already had, we got a Micro Pinball 2 cart, giving us a top-notch treatment of a genre which was otherwise basically missing from the library. Or a Red Baron cart, with the TI-99's only flight sim featuring visuals of your plane and its surroundings. But my own top must-play titles from this list are Barrage, Spot Shot, Micro Pinball, Micro Tennis, Midnight Mason, and Star Runner. So that's your DBT Kart Starter Pack if I have anything to say about it. Thanks for watching, folks. I hope you heard about a TI-99 game you hadn't considered playing before today. And I hope this helped convince a few people that, against all odds, the TI-99 was still alive at the end of the 80s, a decade after it launched.